now going to have a little look at the tracking interface and how you can use it to um, to look at previous previously recorded tracking data we attach this uh, or, or we actually put a tracking device in a vehicle that um, that was actually being driven from here to somewhere somewhere near the Norwich area um, so we're just going to have a look at that that information first thing we're going to do is select the vehicle itself I'm going to select the track tracking information the actual journey and then I'm going to ask it to show me that data on the screen you see our display has actually changed and we can now see the, uh, the journey that actually took place um, as you can see the tracker was switched on about one hour and, and it says one hour and 16 minutes prior to the start of the journey and it was a journey that took place from one of our staff's houses which is in Chelmsford um, to a final location in in Norwich you can obviously see the direction is displayed on the track itself and each track point can be selected and shown on the map and as I select the track points obviously tracking data doesn't start until a little bit further down here until we get to about here that we see some some changes in the data here we actually see the, the journey starting in earnest as I select points on that route I've got my speed information here so I can actually see what speed the vehicle was actually doing between the two tracking points well, it's, it's obviously an average speed between those two tracking points you can also use the Google Maps to um, to view uh, specific parts of that journey in more detail by zooming in I can see that the vehicle is actually heading up the A12 and then obviously follow the progress of that journey track by track and see the average speed that was actually made between those two tracking points I think this was set to 30 second tracking so effectively what you're seeing is a is a new location every 30 seconds because of the way the data is actually collected it doesn't it doesn't significantly increase cost it uses something called GPRS which is basically IP an IP or internet protocol communication over a mobile telephone network and you're actually charged for the amount of data you send not the the frequency that you actually send the data because obviously tracking data is such very small portions of data the cost of sending that information is, is, is relatively small 
we're now at the end of the journey where, where the, the tracking actually stopped as you can actually see it gives you a one hour and ten minutes of tracking actually carried on before our member of staff switched the tracker off this is quite useful information because if, if, if you're using this covertly um, for a surveillance situation you'll actually see the periods of time that people stop in, in each location what's more obviously you've got access to um, the, the all, all the Google all the Google map features basically means that you can change the gap the, the map view and and have a more uh, intricate view of where the uh, where the, the mapping and the location actually is we zoom in on this I happen to know that it's uh, a new property We've just recently built uh, that is uh, obviously visible at the end of this uh, this tracking information so what we're actually going to get because um, obviously Google Maps data is uh, obviously aged it's a, it's a building site this interface will work with other map snapping so if you've, if you've got more up to date map data there's no reason why you can't use that data but Google Maps is is pretty current and um, obviously what I've shown you here is, is unfortunate really uh, in that I'm taking you to a property that's actually been built in the last approximately 12 months and obviously the Google Map data for this particular area is uh, slightly older than that so do, do forgive me for that Well, I think that just about concludes this particular demonstration. Um, I'm going to do another video that, that um, explains how to use the geofencing uh, side of this interface where you can actually set no go or um, no exit areas on the map and, and how you can actually get that to create alarms where, where you're actually notified if that that actually takes place obviously you can work in, in both ways like in the case of a child or a pet that you don't want to leave a, a particular vicinity you can have this actually send you a text message um, should that should that take place um, alternatively if you've um, if you've managed to put a tracker on let's say someone you don't want to go into a particular area on, or on someone's vehicle that you don't want to go into a particular area and you want it to warn you that, that area is being breached you can actually get that to happen that's in the next video anyway um, that concludes this one and thanks for listening bye for now